Welcome back, Cylons. We are starting up part seven of Everybody's Gone to the Rapture. We are starting up Kate's story, um, or I guess concluding it, because I guess this entire um, section of the game that we've been playing has been learning about Kate and her relationship and this event that's been going on. So I'm pretty excited to see the conclusion. Let's dive in. So we left off with Frank at the Appleton farm, and... I think the decision came from Steven to have them drop whatever they dropped on the city. Or the town, rather. All these little lights are like symbolic. Milky Way is really pretty, though. It's super pretty. I wonder if that was the event that they were talking about where. The Milky Way was crossing over, the center of the Milky Way, I should say, is crossing over the same line of sight as, as Earth. And maybe that's how they got this strong radio signal. And these things started happening in this town, but why specifically this town? Was it just because there was a radio observatory here? And they first picked it up, or was it happening all across Earth? And no one really realized it yet because of I guess not having a, uh, a radio observatory where I just came from. Am I supposed to go back? What? Help.
light is always- it's so loud when you're close to... It's so loud when you're close to it. by this earlier. We saw the conversation between I think it was Frank and Lizzie. I see this is where I, I've still not figured out am I supposed to follow the light? thing about the game so far. There's these events where you have to kind of tilt the controller in a way. And this doesn't seem like it's one of those events. But it also sounds like something is still going on in the light, like there's a, another event going on in it from a, a different memory or something. All the dead birds. All the dead birds. Okay, that- it's... I feel like it's taking me back in a circle. I am there. I was supposed to make my way back to the observatory. I thought. But I guess it's not. going that way. I have no idea where you want me to go. Little light. Little light, please. Please. I think I am supposed to go that way. Alright. I'm just gonna keep walking this way and see what I find next. It, it's almost like it wants me to go this way. But it pauses here. Why, why is it pausing here? There's nothing else for me to investigate here. Yeah, there's, there's nothing else unless I'm supposed to... No. Okay, well, let's keep walking this way then. There's other sounds now. Earlier it was just like the one sound of the light. this way? You want me to go that way? Yeah, we investigated this. Oh, why on earth are you there? Why aren't yes. you calling from home? It's hard to explain. To move around to follow it. When it finds a suitable host, it begins to amplify. Sorry, I'm not making much sense. They're talking about flu and a quarantine on the radio, but this. I'm... Yeah, we already listened to that conversation. He had to move with it. He saw things migrating and, and would mark it with paint. And that's why I started following the paint on the ground and, and the symbols. He, he would paint in simity. In simity. 
infinity symbols on things. And I would kind of investigate those, but I only found one at the rugby field. Yeah, and then the bird flew the, through the window. Um... Why do they take the doors off? Is it... It's easier to move that way? This seems kind of odd. Influenza. Doesn't seem like anyone lived here for a really long time. Yeah. It seems to be blocked off. This is so pretty. So pretty. So pretty. Um, it's a little sad seeing all the birds on the ground, though. That gives me, like, that. that's why I wonder if this is just the first city to pick up on it. Oh, look, there's a bug. Butterflies or insects, right? Oh. Butterfly's gone. Let me listen to that one already, because it's not beeping. I feel like I've missed something here because I I feel like we finished Steven's story. Steven and Lizzie. And Steven was chasing this entity. them having a conversation at the pub. Have I been to the power plant? Steven was definitely here. Yeah, he was smoking a cigarette. Pressure in my eyes again. I can't move my legs, can't feel my face. When I collapsed, the light was waiting for me there. Caught me, lowered me here. Now it's pooling around my feet. Watching me. The printers are spewing out page after page of zeros. It's frightened too. It'll be okay. It'll be fine. I'll look after you. It's alone. It's scared. Oh, it's traveled so far. It's okay. I can help you. We can be together now. Ten seconds to signal fusion. We can be together. Three seconds. Two.
What just happened? Signal fusion? I know that she was trying to power up Tower 5. From, I think it was Tower 6, maybe? So is that the printer sound? Printing all the zeros? They closed the tunnel. There's no trains. I've put up a sign. The tunnel, Howard. Is it closed? I think so. I don't like it. It's not right at all. Stop whining. It doesn't help anyone. Did you know you're bleeding? Oh, it's this headache. It's just killing me. I haven't had a nosebleed like this since I was a kid. But you've not been to the village? No, I've been here the last couple of days or at home. I've only spoken to Clive at the EMC on the phone. Well, tried to anyway, but with all the crossed lines... It... But no direct contact with any other people? No, no one. What are you talking about? What's going on? It's the pattern. It's adapted again. It doesn't need direct contact to transfer. It's using the phones! What do you mean, direct contact? Stephen? We're carrying, it's burning my lungs. Probably some kind of nerve agent. I suspect it's only exposure to the pattern that has kept me alive this long. I'm making my way to Tower 6. I'm going to fuse the signals from the optical array. I just... I just hope I can make it. So she was fusing the signals. That's what we listened to a few moments ago. Am I doing this out of order? Is it supposed to be out of order? Am I supposed to get this sense of forwards and backwards in time? Or have I gone about this the wrong way? Hello? Hello, is there anyone there? Can anyone hear me? Clive? Clive, it's Stephen Appleton. Are you there? Can you hear me? Over. Come on, Clive, where are you? Kate, Kate, it's Stephen. Come in, Tower 6. Kate, are you there? Kate! Anyone? Hello? Can anyone hear me? No. This is Dr. Stephen Appleton broadcasting from within the quarantine zone. Can anybody hear me? Oh, oh God, no. no. That's really creepy. Uh, so I have to go back through Appleton Farm to get to the observatory? So I- because I don't- I feel like I'm just going in circles. A little light. Where are you, little light?
You're a daft old bird walking all the way out here for it. You know Charlie would have dropped it off. What? And have that stinking great lorry of his poisoning my birds? He shouldn't be driving it on these lanes. It's a hazard. I think he was hoping he could have a word with you about Frank. There's nothing to say. Oh, listen, Wendy, they might all be scared of you, but that's not going to work with me. You're 68 years old. Grow up. Talk to Frank. How dare you speak to me like that? Give me my bird feeder right now. Promise me you'll drop by and see your brother. Megan Holloway, give Not a me... chance. Promise me. It's for your own good, and you know it. You are a shamelessly manipulative and difficult woman. It's no wonder Charlie adores you so much. No wonder I do what? No wonder you never finish what you start. <laughs> I thought I told you to check the incoming stock orders. Wendy, one bird feeder for you. I'll tell Frank you'll stop by. Oh! Charlie, stop mooning around and stick the kettle on. Make yourself useful. Huh. Oh, uh, can go that way? I don't think I've been inside the warehouse. Appleton! What are you doing here? You thieving bastard! I knew it was you! Listen, take everything you need. But then you have to leave. You don't understand. You can't be near me. Painting these stupid little pictures. Stealing food. You always were a little prick. Please, every second we're in proximity makes it worse. I'm a primary conduit. You're a fucking disgrace. Come here. Yeah, don't touch me. Get off. What's going on? Come in here. Lord. Jesus, Get out of Sam. Us. Thinking you're so much better Sam, than the rest of us. No physical you contact. You stupid fucking missus. Sam, stop she's it. better than any of you. <laughs> Sam? Is he? Meg, please. Don't, don't come near me. Meg! <laughs> Charlie! Meg! Meg, wait! <laughs> don't touch me! Meg, please, you have to understand. It was an accident. Get off her. Let go. Let's just go. Charlie, you have to understand. It was an accident. Let's just leave him. Leave him. What have you done, Appleton, you bastard? Come on, Charlie. Let's Meg, just get Charlie, out of here. Meg, Charlie, please! Did he hit this guy with a hammer? Like he was trying to save people but also trying to figure out what was going on and i think that people didn't understand that what he, he was doing was trying to figure out what, what this event or entity was and so it didn't help at all oh man that's really rough uh Have I been here? Hello? Oh, there's a phone. Station Master's House, Howard Lantham speaking. Howard, it's Clive, Clive Smith. I need you to listen to me and not ask questions or interrupt. Can you do that? Yeah, I can. But why are you calling? The Emergency Measures Committee is imposing a quarantine around the valley. We've got an influenza outbreak in the village. We're suspending rail services, and we're also going to be shutting down the roads for a bit. Uh, you're going to be dealing with some anxious people, Howard, so you need to explain it's all under control, and we'll be back to normal in a few days. All right? Open up the emergency store. There's posters and boards, along with a bunch of stuff that hasn't been used since the war. Grab anything you think might be useful. 
I need you to close up any unoccupied buildings, put posters up, that sort of thing. Make sure everything is all squared away in ship shape. You are a military man, I'm sure you understand that. Everyone doing their bit, following their orders. All right? All right, I think. Good man. I knew we could count on you. Ah, Jesus, please. What the hell was that? <gasps> he knew, and he hung up the phone. Clive knew. He knew. He knew. What a butt. Oh no. Oh, this is really cute. Six oh seven. Hmm. Well, so Howard closed down the train because Clive told him Lizzie wanted to meet Stephen in the in the tunnel because he was told. But they, she was told to meet there. It's weird because it's still ticking, but it, it's it's like it's stopped. It's like the mechanics have stopped working. But time is still going. Interesting. I guess he was the conductor. Hmm. to marking out the days on the walls like a cave woman so she's alive she's okay i i don't know what happened after she sinked to tower six it didn't sound like she was okay after they synced
and Stephen. I don't know if you'll ever listen to this. Uh, maybe you've decided to stay with Kate, and I, I can't blame you for that. But I can't wait for you either. I've got to think about the baby. Oh and, no! Well, <laughs> I should have left a long time ago. I'm pregnant. I've run out of excuses for not leaving now. But I do love you, Stephen. And I hope you find peace one way or another. Oh, there's planes coming. Not the planes, oh no! That's really sad. That's so sad. This is where I came from. Do I go back this way? I don't think I go back this way. There's the lights up there now. Why did they just cut the power lines? Go back into town. Yeah, I mean. The top part of the map. So they close off the train. Uh, I don't know where I'm supposed to go. I don't know if I'm supposed to go back down towards Appleton Farm. We'll go back into town. I 
We've been there. I think this house doesn't even allow us to go inside. Uh... I don't think that that house had anything in it. Can't do anything with that, okay. I, I don't know where to go. Do I... Like, if I keep going back to the train station, am I going to, uh... I don't think there's any way for me to cross... the train station. I'd have to go through Appleton Farming. I don't... I don't know where to go. Hmm. I think the best thing that I could do is maybe follow the light. I feel like it's somewhat guiding me, but I I don't I have no idea. I have no idea. Um down that way and um, maybe let's walk back towards the train and then mm. I guess we'll just follow the light and see where it leads us. Maybe I missed something at the train station. I had to have missed something. I feel like it wouldn't be leading me back here if I if I hadn't if, if I had gotten everything. Maybe get on the train? No. We can't get on the train. Okay. I think that was the tunnel that uh, Stephen told Lizzie to follow. Maybe down this way? I can't really leave. I've never seen it. They do though. You're overreacting. Steven? They stare at me. <laughs> Yesterday I went into the village and this old woman just stopped in the middle of the street and stared at me like I had two heads. Oh, don't be so melodramatic. <laughs> I'm like a walking freak show. Oh, this place. It's so insular. I just don't understand how you grew up here. Well, I was very different then. And they're not so bad, really. That's easy for you to say. Just give it a bloody chance, Kate. This was the deal. A year here, and we could be in with a real shot at Lucia. Stephen! Oh, Christ, it's Lantham. Stephen Appleton, I thought it was you. What's all this about a yank wife? Oh. Um, hello. <laughs> Two heads, Stephen. Hi, I'm Kate. I feel like that's the printer sound. It has to be the printer sound. Like an old school printer where you'd have to like perforate the sides of the paper and and like there was multiple copies of it. Now 
wants me to go back in here. What did I miss over here? It's a little hard to keep up with the light sometimes because it will wander away and then switch directions and I don't Jesus, know which direction man, I'm supposed to- What have your face? It's nothing. You collecting feed? Hello. Looks like the supplies haven't been coming in. Huh. Again? The phones are all strange. I can't pinpoint the logic of transmission. You what? What are you doing with that paint? Means the EMC are actually moving at the proper speed. Listen, Frank. Have you, uh, heard anything on the radio about a flu outbreak? Doesn't seem much like flu to me. They're shutting down access to the valley to try and isolate it. No, there's something about the phones. I can't put my finger on it quite yet. What are you talking about? Hey, I'm still talking to you. Where are you going? Just walks away. You knew what you were getting into. Really? Well, I'm sorry we don't measure up to your exacting standards, Dr. Collins. Maybe you just need to give us ordinary humans a break. What? Ordinary humans like Lizzie Graves? She knows. Did you really think that I wouldn't find out? Frank told me. Or did you forget there's one person in this shithole who actually talks to me? Kate, it was just a dream. Don't bother, Stephen. Oh, for Christ's sake. Kate, slow down. You were engaged to her, Stephen. You nearly married oh, her. Oh, come on, it was just a drink. Then why the hell did you lie to me about because it? Because I knew you'd be mad and then it would end up in a row. You wanted to focus on the event tonight. Oh, so you were actually doing me a favor. Wow, I guess I just forgot to say thank you. Do not treat me like I'm an idiot. You're overreacting. I know, I know you're stressed. Just don't. You keep away from me tonight. I'm not gonna let you ruin this for me. Kate. Kate, come on, this is crazy. Whoa, 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 what's going on with the, do you see that? wasn't open before.
When I was a kid, my dad found a fox. It had been hit by a car and couldn't walk anymore. My mum would spare, of course. Made him keep it in the shed. He was already slipping away from us then. He spent hours with that fox, telling it all about Italy and the villages they bombed there. I was... I was jealous, I think. The fox got more of my dad than I did. But it was dying, that was clear. So one day, I snuck out, took it a sandwich for food. I was only eight. When it bit me, I remember the anger, the shock, the hurt. Running in, screaming from the garden, my mum panicking about rabies. My dad beat it to death with a spade. Later I found him crying. I'd done a Ken, son. That's what he said. I'd done a Ken, it was hurting you. That's just a poor, dumb, dying animal. It doesn't know it's hurting us. Christ help us, it's left the valley. It's everywhere now. It's been three hours since the planes went over. I haven't been able to reach anyone on the shortwave. I'm beginning to think I may have made a terrible miscalculation. from me. You've made me do things I never even thought I was capable of. But if you think I'm coming with you... Kate? Wait. Stop. Kate. This is Catherine Collins. I don't know if anyone will ever hear this. It's all over. I'm the only one left. No.
Maybe it learned and kept kept her alive? I don't think I can go over here. <gasps> oh my gosh. Was this Steven or was this Kate? This had to have been Steven going out and taking pictures and bringing back uh, the information that he had found and was trying to calculate where the signal came from. It had to have been Steven. Yeah, it, it had to have been him. Oh my gosh. I can't open that, okay. Why did he use paint? On the plane, Stephen leaned across me and pointed out of the window. Down there, he said. That's home. But all I saw were patches of color. I don't think until this moment that I understood that one could contain the other so completely. Are these the printers? How did you connect so many of them? Are they just printing out the same thing? By... I watched a butterfly dancing in a strip of sunlight. All of its life contained in a single day. The blink of an eye between the ebb of the darkening tide. Lying there with the pattern curled around me, I saw the inevitability, the necessity of presence born from absence, the constant unfolding. cow I hear something I hear like a, a radio
I watched the pattern lean in and time slow to almost nothing. I saw the flame leap from Steven's hand and the moment hang in the air forever. <gasps> I watched his face. No! And in the last second, I almost believe he saw me. He wasn't frightened or angry. I remember his expression, just like I remember it from the first time. Early that morning when he woke and still half sleeping said, God, I love you. Aww. And I loved him as he entered the fire. And I let him go, knowing I wasn't ready to join him. We have held time to ourselves here in this place held the light to the ground because we were afraid of the coming dark. But now we understand that to cling to the light is not living. I've spent my life watching the illumination from a million dead stars reaching for me without grasping this meaning. The light we cast transcends our death. The pattern made by our living creates a bridge across the dark. has a lovely voice. Oh my goodness. This has to do something with a black hole. They were observing a black hole. Or had to have been. It reaches out from the shadow of the tower, across the observatory, over the valley, and consumes the world. Everything is light now. Everything has come to rest. The world is scored by the traces we carved into it. Our presence is everywhere, the bridge joining our stories. This world existed before we came to it, and it will continue without us. In the empty fields and houses, our traces radiate, and others will come to dance in the light we cast. We can slip away gently, unafraid, knowing that everything will continue. nothing in here <laughs> Who 
Who's that? Is that Kate? The end is coming now. I'm not afraid. We have each other. We lived apart from them. We understand now our failure to touch, to belong. But it doesn't matter anymore. Everybody is gone, and we will join them. We are born apart, driftwood on the banks of an endless dark ocean, and we will be carried away by the swell soon enough. But in between, in the single day of living, that dancing in a strip of sunlight, we can find what we miss. The love that makes us whole. The imminence. Everybody found their other. This pattern is mine. I guess that's it. Wow. Wow, that was... That was a very rich story. Wow. I'm both sad and also intrigued at the same time. Well, that was a wonderful conclusion to this game. Um, it was very in-depth as far as story and characters. The music was really great. Is really great. Uh, I'm a little sad. Like, after the game ended, I, I wasn't expecting such a... It wasn't really abrupt. It was more or less a conclusion. But it leaves you wondering to what is going to happen to the rest of the world afterwards, you know? It opens up this door and then leaves it open for your imagination, but then concludes the chapters that were written in this town. It, it was a very good game. A very good story game. Parts of it were kind of confusing to kind of follow up the, the little light that was uh, roaming around in the town, but I think if you just take the time and explore, explore the game, enjoy it, You'll enjoy it. Thanks for watching, Cylons.